Hello everyone, Bernina Jeff in Grand Junction, Colorado. Today we're going to do embroidery basics. I've had several people on my YouTube channel say that uh, they have an embroidery unit and they've had it for a year or two in a box and they've never had a chance to go to their dealer and learn how to use it. So this is the class for you. I just finished setting up my students today with the settings on each one of their Berninas. So if you have not seen my YouTube for embroidery settings on the 7 series, that's a place to start before you even finish the rest of this video because the settings are important. I teach you how and which settings are important for embroidery. So I've done this class. It is a general class, so it'll work for baby locks, brothers, any type of embroidering you do. So first thing we start with is like it's building a house. We're going to start with the foundation. And the foundation of any embroidery project is stabilizer. And I'm going to teach you about two stabilizers today because this is basics. There's more than two stabilizers in the world, and that could be a whole day's video on it. So we're going to teach you about tearaway stabilizer, and we're going to teach you about cutaway stabilizer. So tearaway stabilizer is designed to work on fabrics that do not have stretch. So quilting cotton, um, twills have a little stretch, so tear away would be fine. Uh, flannels, things that don't have stretch work pretty well for tear away. And then when you're done with the project, you just tear your project off of the hoop and uh, you don't have to worry about trimming the excess stabilizer from the back. So tear away is great for stable fabrics. Now, the other thing I want to teach you about is a cutaway product. So cutaways are just like the name says. You cannot tear them when you, after you embroider them. So you have to go to the back side of your embroidery project and trim away from the back side. T cutaways are designed for stretchy fabrics. Baby onesies, t-shirts, athletic wear, polar fleece, even denim has a stretch to it. You ever put your jeans on in the morning and they're tight and by noon they're just right? That's the way denim is woven. So it's designed to have a little stretch. So I actually use cutaway on denim. So that is the two I'm going to teach you with today. Embroidery basics is just that. Embroidery beyond the basics, we will record next month, have more stabilizers involved. Now if you go to anybody's website that sells stabilizer, and one company I deal with is OESD, they will, you can go to their website and get a whole list of their stabilizers and what they work with. I also sell Floriani stabilizers, and Floriani has a nice uh, set of stabilizers. Now, stabilizers are something you might think are fairly expensive, but if you don't prepare your project with a good foundation, you're going to get a design that looks awful. And here's an example. Um, when the Disney machines first came out, they had this great big, huge uh, embroidery design with all the Disney characters, and they put it on the back of a blue jean jacket. And the last step in that, it has almost 100,000 stitches. And all those stitches kind of pull into the center of that jacket. And the last step was putting the outline in black around Mickey's ears and everything else. Well, because of the stitches pulled that jacket in, the sewing machine put the outline where it was supposed to, but it was about a quarter inch off. And everybody brought their machine in thinking the machine was broken but it was because of stabilization. So one layer of regular stabilizer is good for about 8,000 stitches. And I sometimes do cheating math and I'll say 10,000 stitches. So one layer of stabilizer is good for about 10,000 stitches. Every design you buy or you get, it tells you how many stitches are in it. And here's a little tip too, it's above. If all your 10,000 stitches are in the size of a merit badge, that's going to require more stabilizer. Well, how do you get more stabilizer? You just layer up. If you're using cutaway and your design has 16,000 stitches in it, I put a layer of stabilizer in my project in the hoop, and then I'll throw another layer of stabilizer underneath the hoop while it first starts sewing to float that stabilizer to give those stitches support then your stitches won't all pull to the center and your last outline will be off. So if you had 30,000 stitches, you'd need three layers of stabilizer. 
And this is something most people don't even realize that the density, the number of stitches is, you know, determines how much stabilizer you use. Whether you're doing tear away or cut away, it's the same. You need a layer for every eight to 10,000 stitches. And if it's really tight stitches, then you need, if you had 10,000 stitches in the size of a quarter, you might need three layers of stabilizer in that, even though there's not the 30,000 stitches, but it's all in one little area. So everybody's kind of got that concept of stabilization. It's the foundation. It's the building of your house. If you have a weak foundation, you're going to get ugly walls. You're going to get a design. And I told my class this already. I have a mantra when I embroider. There's two kinds of embroiders. There's embroiders that sew a sample, and there's embroiders that wish they did. Because if try to do a sample that resembles your project. If you're doing a baby onesie, use an old t-shirt as the top and the same cutaway stabilizer and see how it turns out. Because you don't want to wreck this $10 onesie or a $50 jacket without a test. Because once embroidery stitches are in, they're almost impossible to get out. So stabilization. Now the next thing I work on is needles. And I've already done a little bit of this on one of my YouTubes, but I recommend an embroidery eyed needle. The eye of an embroidery needle is twice as tall. And the thread we use in embroidery is a 40 weight. It's almost 30% thicker than normal sewing. So you need a special needle when you're embroidering. And I like the Schmitz Gold embroidery. And I use 9014. A lot of people will use 75 11s or 80 12s, but I have found the 90 14s, especially when you're using a fancier thread like the Floriani that has a little shine to it. When I'm using the size 11 or 12 needles, I find it shreds and I get this wormy caterpillar thing above the needle eye. And that's because the thread's going through the eye of the needle multiple times before it ends up in your project and it catches one of those little strands and shreds it out. So the size 14 or 9014 helps eliminate that shredding. And when we're embroidering, we want to have fun. We want the project to get done. We, won't, we don't want to have stress. So this helps take some of the stress out of your embroidery project. And they're titanium coated and $6.99 for five of them. It's just a little over a dollar a piece. Inexpensive. I'm, I, I swear my middle name should have been frugal frugal vogel because I find ways to help you know enjoy our hobbies without having to spend top dollar and everything so that's part of the people who love my videos yes if you do have this 90 40 in and it still shreds then what do you do if you're still having shredding problem then it's usually a mechanical there's a burr somewhere along the thread path something as simple as a little cap that holds the thread on could have a burr on it so I take one of those orange um, uh, nail file things and I file it nice and smooth. Every place the thread touches has to be really smooth. Something as, as unseeable as a little burr on your needle plate where your needle goes in and out. Sometimes a needle can strike that plate and make a burr on it. And then as your thread's going past that, every so often it'll snag. It doesn't break the thread, but it snags one little layer of the fiber off and then it ends up above the needle eye. It's called worms or caterpillars. And if you get one, you know exactly what I mean. Anybody that's done any amount of sewing or, or quilting, it looks like a, a mess above your needle eye. But it didn't happen up here. It actually happened down below in the hook. And it could be in the needle also then? Yeah. Okay. First thing I do, the cheapest, the cheapest repair is always change your needle. I've actually taken one, not the Schmitz ones, but I've taken a brand new needle out, throw it in my machine, and in 50 stitches it was shredding the thread. There was a burr inside the eye of that needle hole. They make these a billion, t billion these a minute, so eventually one or two are going to slip by. All right, so there's my needles. Um, now, people ask me, what bobbin thread should I use? Now, if you're a baby lock owner, they, they send you finishing touch thread with your machine. And I have found that with the 7 Series on Bernina, 
that this, this finishing touch is a wonderful addition to your bobbin case for not letting that bobbin thread peek around the edges of some of your designs. Like if you're doing lettering or skinny little uh, veins and stuff, sometimes that bobbin thread peeks up to the top. The finishing touch helps a lot. Alice has uh, a special bobbin case called a high tension bobbin case for the 7 series. And it is golden and it has, it's golden color and it has about 15% more tension on it. So when you're embroidering, it keeps those bobbin threads underneath. So it basically allows you to use any type of thread you want. You sell those too? I sell those. Those run $100. And my last video, I sold out on them. So um, it's a good product if you plan on doing a lot of embroidering. If you plan on doing uh, free motion quilting, it works great for free motion quilting. And it works great for ruler work. So that's the reason they designed that high tension bobbin case. So the other thing I will use on the 7 series, especially with a high tension bobbin case, is you can get this big cone thread. This is OESD bobbin thread. And it's like 6,000 yards for $16. So that's, that's one way you can kind of be a little more frugal. But, um, and then I use this little stand put the bobbin thread on there and then it comes out so you don't have to, you can just leave the stand sitting behind your machine and just fill <coughs> a bunch of bobbins. You don't even have to take the thread out of the machine to fill a bobbin using this, this system. So these guys run about 20 or $25. They're, they're really cool engineering because you can put them on the side here and you can bring this over here like this. So it is, it is the ultimate thread stand. And I will get a lot of orders for those over YouTube, so I have to kind of pay my way, so there you go. <laughs> All right, so bobbin thread is really important. Now, we have a client in here who has a Bernina 560, and she has a special bobbin case with a pigtail in it. And that pigtail acts like the golden bobbin case. It adds the extra tension so that thread doesn't poke up. That's what Bernina did on the previous models. They actually sent you, sold you that bobbin case with the uh, embroidery unit. All right, so we're all kind of set up here. Um, if you don't have a bobbin with um, bobbin thread in it, I'm going to help this gal right here. So bear with me, and you can kind of keep listening and watch the uh, empty camera. So we're going to put this um, thread stand right here, and then I'm going to pop it through this guide right there. That takes it off nice and smooth. And then I come all the way around, and I put it through there. And two, three, four, five, seven times around. Coming from behind. Yeah. And fill that all the way up. If you're uh, filling bobbins for your embroidery, um, the only time I wouldn't fill it all the way up is if I'm matching the top thread. And that's okay. There's times when you're doing freestanding lace that you want to do an ivory colored snow, you know, snowflake, not maybe not a snowflake, but something a different color. So make, match your bobbin with the top. It's, it's not against the rules. They just have the lesser expensive bobbin thread. So, All right, has everybody else got bobbin they need? Sweet. All right, here we go. We're filling another bobbin here. Snap it there, around, popped out. It's got texture in there, so it'll just wrap and catch. All right, so she's winding up her bobbin. And we will notice if we have good bobbin tension later um, based upon the uh, little sewing sample we're going to do. So I have a sample of tension that I am going to show around the class. But when you're testing things out, I like to sew a block letter H. This is the front of it, and here's the back. So which one's the right tension? Well, the proper tension that you want to achieve is this one right here. You want about one-third of the bobbin in the middle and one-third of the color of your sewing on each side of that, that uh, project. This one in the middle, the bobbin tension is a little bit too tight. 
So instead of playing with the bobbin tension, I just increased my upper tension a little bit to achieve what I want. So we're going to work with upper tension whenever we adjust. So I'm going to pass this around. And this one right here, see this H and the, the bobbin threads all over the place? I used, in the Bernina 7 series, I used the regular needle plate that has the big long opening, the 9 millimeter. That's what it looked like. Then when I switched to the, the single hole plate, it changed it all the way to that one right there. So it's very important to use your single hole plate if you have one for embroidery. It really will clean up the, the, uh, the, the way your embroidery looks from the back and the front. So I highly recommend a single hole plate for Berninas. The correct one is right here. You want to put a little note there saying, good. So these gals are enjoying the class today. I hope all you get stuff out of it. We're going to move on now from the bobbin to the anatomy of a hoop. So a hoop or a frame. We're using a five by seven size today, and we're using both the hoop and a grid. And the grid will let us uh, line up our project on on our uh, on our hoop and make it stitch out to the center. So if uh, we're new at embroidering, I want to show you. The anatomy of a hoop. So this is the Bernina. It's roughly five by seven. And actually from tip is about 10.5 and width is about 6.2. But the anatomy of a hoop, if you can see it, it has two little triangles that need to match up. This inner hoop can line up three different ways, but you want to line up those two little triangles at the bottom of your hoop whenever you're putting a project or a stabilizer in. And what I usually do right now is I will take a black Sharpie and I'll mark those little uh, triangles. And then I will mark inside the ridge. Can I see your hoop real quick? So I will mark the size of my hoop. I will mark what it's called. It's called an oval. Of course, I've got this camera flipped. And then do you see my little triangles that I've marked with a little black Sharpie? So that works really good for lining things up. Anybody know about that? So that just teaches you the anatomy of a hoop. So when you do put your grid in, it's going to equal what you did for your uh, calibration. Now, we're also going to use cutaway stabilizer today because we're using just a, a piece of white or natural colored muslin. Now, I call this hooping 101 because there is an art to hooping. And it's going to be a little tough with the camera, but uh, I'm going to move it over here to an open space. And I'm going to hoop it the way I like to hoop it and show you a couple tricks. And then you're going to uh, go ahead and do it on your own. So let's, let's all move over here to an empty spot. Oh, you can just watch. Oh, okay. All right. So what I, what I did ahead for everyone is I put a line, and I call this a flagpole line. It goes up and down, then just a little crosshair for the center of my design. So see this little flagpole here? So I put that flagpole in the middle of my stabilizer, and it's good to have stabilizer cut about an inch bigger than your hoop. If your stabilizer is exactly the same size as your hoop, it's hard to get in there. Then when you open up your hoop, you want to open it up to where there's almost a quarter inch of space right here. Otherwise, you're struggling. Then I will put my hoop there, and it needs to be on a flat surface. Your lap isn't flat enough. So. Now, I'm going to put my project down with the stabilizer I'm going to use behind it. This is your basic 101 stabilizing. Then I'm going to put my 
inner hoop. So you have an inner hoop and an outer hoop. So then I put my inner hoop on there and the grid. And when I'm using this grid, I want to make sure you can read Bernina upright on the bottom. And I'm going to line that center pole, the center line of my grid up with this, the line on my markings on my uh, project. All right. So then this is what I call the, the Jeff thumb pinch. I, I reach my hands underneath the stabilizer and project. I push down with my thumb and I pinch with my fingers so I have all of this hoop and stabilizer and everything pinched together. Then you bring, your, bring it over to your outer hoop and hope nothing moves. And because I've done this a million times, my, uh, my project is lined up directly within right online. So come on over here and see this is what you want to see. So here's your project and then when you put your hoop on there your line is right on there. I usually don't worry a whole lot about my my crosshair. The crosshair can be adjusted up or down real easy on your on your sewing machine embroidery features. But it's really hard to change it when it's wonky left or right. So worry about that flagpole being up and down straight. The other thing is, is if it's perfectly straight, but it's just maybe an eighth of an inch off to the left or the right of the center, that's acceptable too. Unless you have a design that fills up the exact size of your hoop, it's okay to move your design left or right. So think of the flagpole. Get the flagpole pointing straight up and down. All right, so that's, that's your assignment now. <laughs> so get your hoops. And you're going to need to be able to do this on your own because Jeff's not there for you uh, 10 o'clock at night when you need to get something done the next morning. Now, if you didn't notice, I... I take the hoop and I slide the hoop off the table with pressure on it and then I grab this, this little uh, tightening screw and I tighten it when it's off the edge of the table and that way it's a whole lot easier to... So I just slide it off to the edge of the table and then give myself some room for my fingers to work. Now a lot of us don't have fingers that work real good. They make a tool, a, a key tool, a hoop key do tool that slides onto this. It's purple or black depending upon your hoop. And it gives you more pressure on your hands to be able to get that tight. You don't need it so tight that it uh, is stripping off the uh, screw or the nuts, but it needs to be tight enough to where it's not going to fall out when you're working with it. The other thing I do on Bernina hoops is I push the inner hoop through just a little bit further than flush. That way the hoop is dragging on the uh, arm of your machine with the stabilizer touching instead of all the plastic. So it's just one of those little tips that I like to push it through just a little bit. How are we doing? Anybody need? Here, I'll help over here a little bit. All right, we're out, we're out of center here. We're, we need to have this oh, what am I like doing? this. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. And there you go, Still like there. that. Now do your thumb pinch oh, okay. and get into there. You did pretty good first try. <laughs> all right, very good. And just slide this over, slide this off to the edge, oh. and now tighten it that way. So where do we get the hoop you do? Hoop key do, it's over on our notions wall. And again. How you doing? Yeah, you have to open that up a quarter inch. If you if it's not, it's like pushing uh, something that's almost impossible to push, obviously. How tight does this have to be? It's tight enough. If you if you can't move it anymore, it's tight enough. Now let's take our project uh, the the grid off, and let's see how we did. All right. 
So sometimes there's a little bubble here or there. So I push against the hoop and pull up on the project. See how I'm pulling that bubble out of there? Okay. But you don't, it doesn't have to be trampoline tight, and it, but you don't want it wobbly and wonky. You don't want waves in it. So if there is a wave, I usually put my finger against the hoop and I pull up on the fabric or, and the fabric and the stabilizer. You can usually work that wonky out of there. Or you loosen it up a little bit, wonky it out, and then tighten it down again. Very good, Alice. Thank you. Let me see there how you do. Very good. Now, this is the thing I was showing is you push that inner hoop out just a fraction of an inch. So when it's riding against your sewing machine, it's not clanking all that metal, all that plastic on the metal. But you got to be watch it. You don't want to push too far out. And yep. if you pull your fabric, then it will get all Yes, if you pull just the fabric, it gets all the little wonkies out of there. Yeah. How'd you do? Beautiful. You're good to go. Hang out there. That's all right. This is not a race. Just not doing this. <laughs> all right. This is the hardest part. And I've been doing this at home. Why can't I do it here? But I see I don't. I get off. Of don't worry about that. You want to worry about that. So if it's off just a little bit, I'm going to lift up this corner. Yeah. Now push down. There, that's close enough. Don't worry about this because we can move that up and down. Oh, okay. Okay. It's almost impossible to get both left, right, up and down exact. Now slide it off carefully, and now tighten that up. Other, there you go. That hoop key is a really nice project. Hoop key is yeah. There's one for baby locks. There's one for the really old Berninas, like the 180s. And then there's one for everything else. Hoop key? Hoop key do. Hoop key do. I've got my shopping list here. I like this gal. <laughs> All right. So now let's go ahead and. Um, Thread our upper thread with, I provided you with thread, so with the darker of the two colors, so that's good. Whatever. You've got some thread in there, so you may want to pull from your needle. I've threaded them twice, and it's a mess. <laughs> I've, I oh. forgot about the thread that's in there, and I put another thread on top. It ends up being a mess. So which one is the best one to use? Is this okay? <coughs> okay, on this, no. Nope. I can't, because I don't. <laughs> Let me show you. This is another one. All right. So these little cones that are either Isocord or Floriani, you want to hold these on the machine horizontal. They are called, they're filled with a cross fill, so they come off the end perfectly. Now, you want to use it and a medium or a teeny weeny little pencil eraser size um, um, spool cap. You, I see one right in here. So grab that one out for me, that pencil one. I only this All right. So that, that'll work fine. You always want it horizontal. Okay. And see, that's a different brand. Uh-oh. All right. Now, Can we borrow one of yours for hers? And I like to put it on this way. So it kind of covers the top a little bit, so it won't okay. ever accidentally get around the middle. All right. Are all these spools wound like that that you buy with the that are? They are. The, all the brands. And like right. That? Okay. So you, if you have those those spools that are cross wound, you can use this on the back side of your machine too. But when you're changing colors, it's easier to grab there. Or Bernina makes a multi spool rack that you can put on the back of your machine and have all your threads ready to go. So go ahead and thread your machine. Make sure your, your foot is up. How tight is this supposed to be? All the way. Like, like that? Yep, just like that. Just so it doesn't come off halfway through. Okay. So we're all threading up. And today we're going to do something really simple. We're just going to pick the alphabet. We're going to pick a block alphabet. And we're going to pick a name between four and seven letters long. And we're going to embroider it. We're going to check for our tension on the bottom. We're going to use a little bit of positioning and stitch it out. So this is going to be a, a first little project for you. So 
open up your um, oh your filing system to your lettering. Hi. Hello. And then is this a class? yes, it is, and I'm recording, so I can't. Okay. Got it. All right. So pick a block letter, and the first the first one we're going to sew out is going to be standard size and all capital letters. So again, we want to we don't want to pick a name that's 14 letters long. We don't want to have something that's just three. So we want to have something four. And if you can't think of anything, just type in Bernina. What's that? Okay, I think you keep touching the top. Oh. Okay, your okay. finger was overlapping. Okay, all right. Okay. okay. You need a. You need, I need, you need I that got calibrated. One at home and I forgot. Oh. See. Oh. You yeah. There yeah. you go. All right. And <laughs> your screen's a little out of calibration too. So remind me before you put it away after this. We can calibrate it. It takes two minutes. Okay. I do a video on screen calibration that gets way off because I, I know the, the effects. So do, do we all have something that's um, on, our, on our screen? I'm going to go ahead and kind of check everybody out here. All right. So go ahead and just type in, you know, something that's four to six letters long, a name or Bernina or whatever you want to put in. All right. Once you've typed it in, hit the green check mark on the 7 Series. All right. That's, that's cool. Now, it's going to pick a hoop that's the smallest for the project. So on Juanita's here, it picked the, the medium. Mm -hmm. And we don't care. We're going we're gonna to go ahead and just use that. You all set? Okay. So now, I want you to hit the little, uh, down the lower right hand side, the needle with the dot, dot, dot. That's your starting to the embroidery feature mode. Where are you at? Okay. You got into the a different mode I didn't need. All right, so go to the dot, dot, dot. Okay, now what's it tell you to do? It tells you to put the hoop on. Don't ever put the hoop on before it tells you. If you do, you might get into this continuous loop that says, put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. I have had at least 20 people text me on that. I can't get to the sewing mode. It keeps telling me to put it on, take it off. So just follow what the screen says. Now, once you put it on, is there a green check mark? Let's hit that. All right. Now, the reason I went all the way to this mode is so we can position. You have to get to this mode so we can position. Now go back up to the little pencil of your editing mode. Um, let's see. I just see a little pencil, editing mode. Is this one? Yeah. Now just put your finger on there and move it around to where you I want to use this hoop area more than once. So I want you to move the name up higher into your hoop. And depending upon what mode you've started in. All right, so just put your finger on love and move oh, it up. Oh, I see. Oh, way up high, way up high. Okay. Yep. Now, some of you noticed that your hoop moved, right? And some didn't. Alice's hoop didn't move. That's because there's a feature on the 7 Series called, um, uh, what is it called? It's called virtual positioning. And you turn this mode on, and wherever you move your design, it virtually shows you where the, with the tip of the needle where that, that little bullseye is going to stitch. Now, I want to turn um, this gal's on so we can all be in the same mode. Now, yours is a little different. Yours should have virtual positioning, too, so we're going to turn yours on in a minute. So we're going to go into the um, ed editing, and then is there plus, and we go to the hoop. And our virtual positioning button is that one right there. Okay. You would have never known that. Right. So that's part of the class I'm teaching you. Okay. And so see, as you move it, it positions. So if I wanted to see where the back of that E is going to go, 
See where that bullseye is? That's where that, it's not going to start stitching there, but that's where it's going to lay the threads. Mm -hmm. You kind of understand the concept with your pro stitcher. Now on yours, let's go to the hoop icon. And then we go into, the, there's a little, you can't tell, there's a butterfly with arrows. So touch that one, and that activates it. Now go out, and now touch the screen. So the bottom of the E is going to go right there. Okay. If I touch right there, the top of the L is going to go right there. This is really, really handy positioning tool. Let's say you had a shirt and you wanted to put a name right above the pocket. You just throw the shirt on the hoop, and you use this virtual positioning, and boom, you can put it exactly in the right place. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's, it, it, it's, it's good as a camera, basically, like the baby locks have. Perfect. All right, so we're threaded. We have bobbin in. Now we're finally going to sew. I mean, look at this. We've been an hour into this, but I've taught you from the bottom up. We want to sew now, and we're going to stitch this out, and then we're going to see our quality. So go ahead and uh, lower your presser foot if you have to, and then hit your green button on the front. And you have to hold the green button in about four seconds for it to activate sewing. And if you did anything wrong, it's going to tell you on the screen sometimes. I don't know how to start. Is it this red button? Okay. You have to lower the presser foot first. And, oh, we need to get out of here. So touch your eye. And you have to start in that mode where it has a dot, dot, dot. Okay, now you have a green. And somewhere along the line, threading was messed up. Start from the beginning. And see, it's wrapped around the inside of this. See? Oh, yep. So now why won't it start? You have to hold it in for four seconds. I like to tuck this in way deep, all okay. the way. That way it's less chance of wrapping. Okay. See? All by yourself. Good job. Yep. <laughs> These machines are smarter than we think. There's, they make us feel like we're doing something wrong. So we're going to let this stitch out, and uh, your USB stick. Well, that that is on my Beyond the Basics class of how to access and put stuff to a USB stick. All right, let's let's troubleshoot. Every time you embroider, you got to be ready for a little troubleshooting. Well, it went a tiny way, so it's kind of in the begin, not in the beginning. All right. So, I go. so you go right here. Turn that top dial to the left, to the left, to the left. Keep going to the left. Okay, that brings you to stitch number three, which is close enough. See here, stitch number three. Oh, okay. All okay. right. And then so, go. on these Bernina machines, the seven series and five series, you have two dials. Uh, but next to the screen and the top dial if you turn it to the left reduces the stitch count top dial turn it to the right it increases and the bottom one goes like a jackrabbit so you're you're not threaded right you're probably not threaded through the take up lever it's right here well we're just going to troubleshoot we're going to whenever you start sewing and it doesn't make a stitch, the best thing to do is to unthread the top, take the bobbin out, and then we're going to just start from scratch and see what, what's going on. Take the hoop off and then we can kind of see what's going on. Oh, take it off. Yeah, because there's going to be a whole bunch of threads underneath yeah. there. So you're going to want to trim that out. Um, don't have it in right now. That's that's not what our problem is. Okay. I'm just thinking the bobbin case may have been loose, not okay. snapped all the way in. Okay. Yeah, because it was nice. Okay. Okay. All right. And again, embroidering is a little bit of troubleshooting. I was so happy yesterday. I did three hours of embroidering. I never had a, a machine problem on the 560. I was just very, very pleased with this performance.
And that's all right. We got we got time here. I almost tipped the camera over. Look at the quality. That looks great, doesn't it? It looks good, but my fabric is puckering. Is that that's poopy? That's kind of typical. You will this fabric's really really thin. If you get a little puckering around the corners and edges of your fabric, you may think of using an iron-on product or a little teeny bit of a spray adhesive because you want to have that top layer and the stabilizer kind of stuck together. I'm not a fan of spray adhesives, but I will use a fusible uh, stabilizer so I can iron those two layers together like a sandwich. And then you don't get these puckers as much. Yep, that's okay. It's it's basically the the fabric is that could help, but it's one of those things that uh, now it's trimmed. Take your hoop off, and we're going to take a look at the back side of it. Should be all trimmed. Let me take a. All right. That is absolutely perfect tension. So you got about a third in the middle and a third and a third. That's ideal. And again, we all finish at different times. Yours is perfect too, Alice. <laughs> That's the tension you want to see. Okay. You got the single hole plate on there. And uh, let me show. So what we got is, we got white and a light brown. And you see the line of the bobbin right down the middle? It's about a third and about a third on each side. That's what you want to see. Now, what we don't want to see is these little puckers around there, yeah. and that can be eliminated with a fusible product or just get your top fabric a little tighter. They make a, um, OSD makes a pressing cloth that actually will help press that out. It looks like a piece of batting. It's special fabric, and you can press with a little steam right through that cloth, and it, it uh, elim eliminates those puckers. I had an event and I sold over 60 of those cloths in the last event. Yep. Occasionally when you start or it goes around a corner, mm -hmm. there's a little loop somewhere and your white thread will pop up. So they make another tool called a loop wand that you can, it's a, it's a needle with texture on it. You push it right at that white spot and it pulls the white to the back. Or every embroiderer's friend is a Sharpie. Oh. Oh. So you can use a Sharpie to color it. This happens to me all the time. All right, we have a little te technical problem. Let's see what we got going. Now, I understand that that says something's wrong with my bobbin. But it's full. All right. Yeah. It's full. So what's happening is the monitor is so sensitive, even though you have bobbin thread, it wasn't seeing it spin. So what I do in this case, when I know I have a full bobbin, okay. is I'll go into my settings and I'll turn my bobbin case off uh, yeah, okay. just so I can get through my project. Okay. But if I'm doing a lot of embroidering, um, I'll show you at the end of class what to look for. Okay. 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 All right. So let's just get out of there. Now just go ahead and... Because that happens a lot. I know. It's frustrating. To me, yeah. Yeah. Bernina's bobbin monitors are very sensitive. So if it's not seeing that bobbin turn, it tells you it's out. And that can happen sometimes even when there's a little slack in there. So um, if I'm in the middle of a project, I'll go into my settings and there's a little eyeball. So I'll turn the eyeball off just to get through my project. And then I will do some technical work. Sometimes it's as simple as a dust bunny inside your bobbin case. Or sometimes the brake inside the bobbin case is turned. And I've even had it to where I had a greasy thumbprint on the bobbin and so the light was trying to reflect off the bobbin, but it was hitting the grease and telling the machine it was empty. Hmm. So, I've had trouble with my eyes. Yeah. Never. And that is one with that model that can be a, a problem. So should you not fill your bobbin so full? That's what I'm doing. No. Nope. Shouldn't matter. As long, you can fill your bobbin as full as it doesn't touch the inside of your bobbin case. I usually fill it 90% full. That way I can see a little bit of that bobbin. And with these big bobbins on the 7 Series, you know, it's, it's nice. Now, look behind here, Alice. See this big swag? Yes. Sometimes it swags so much the thread jumps out and comes across here. I make a little 
You can take a wonder clip with some, uh, what do you call that, 3M command strip. And I put a wonder clip with, with command strip and I put it right there and I clip, I clip the thread right through it right there. And it, then it won't ever jump out. Yeah. What about just using this little? No, you cannot use that. Okay. I'm going to go grab one. It's such a cool deal. I'm going to grab three of them. And that's going to be your free present from me for putting up with recording. Okay? <laughs> well, I get a free pressing cloth. <laughs> <laughs> he just ignored that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> I want one of the pressing cloths. You know, I have one. I don't know if it's you do. OESD, but I have one that looks like Patty. So, and does it work? I know. I, I've never tried it. <laughs> All right, so you at home, you can make this yourself. This is a wonder clip with a command strip to the back. And I'm going to put it on Alice's machine here. I got two more coming. I actually make these here at the store. Keep your mask on. All right, so I peel off the stick, paper, and I make sure I put it just to the left of that screw hole and do it with the, the clippy side up. So now when I thread the machine, I just drop it right down in there. I don't care if it swags here, the thread that's going down there. It won't jump out of this pre-tensioner and jump out of your tension now. I was doing a project and it was jumping out every time I, I turned away from the machine. Hmm. I'd watch it, it'd be fine. I'd turn around for two minutes and it'd jump out. And then I had a nest. Hmm. So this is, I use this every stitch I do on the 7 Series. And, uh, all right. <laughs> Hope you all heard that. I didn't have my microphone on. All right. Yours is a little tight. See right. it? See how it's uh -huh. pulling uh -huh. it a little tight? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would go into my upper tension and go to minus 0.5 just for grins. Okay. So go into your settings. That is absolutely perfect. Yep, that's beautiful. Do um, patterns tell you how many stitches? They do. And when you load it into your sewing machine, she asked, do the do the design patterns tell you how many stitches are in there? A lot of times when you buy a CD, there'll be an information sheet for colors and stuff. It'll tell you how many colors and then how many stitches are in it. So if you find one that has 30,000 stitches, you know right away you need about three layers of stabilizer. And when you put it into your sewing machine, it's, it's on the screen of your sewing machine in different places depending upon the model. On the Bernina 7 Series, it's across the bottom on the progress bar. It'll e even tell you what stitch you're at. So, the down. Okay, here we go. Everybody's getting this free gift <laughs> that needs it. Yeah, that needs a gift. <laughs> See how simple that is? Oop, that one is upside down. <laughs> and you know, only red wonder clips work on Berninas. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now, I, uh, you know, this, this thread that's hanging down here, uh -huh. it's not going to affect how it performs. Okay. I call it a swag effect. It just happens when you're embroidering. It usually happens, gives, whenever the machine goes through a cut cycle, there's a, a, a thread catcher. And when it catches the thread, it gives a little bit of a yank and you get this swag that comes off. This will really help you from not jumping out of your tension unit. But if you use a tower, you don't need, you, you would you go through here? Yes, yeah. when you use a tower, you, you go through an extra little guide on the back. Yep, exactly. But you don't use that guide when you're coming off a spool. It, it adds so much tension that you're gonna get shredding. Another place for a problem to happen. Okay. All right. So now I want you to go into 
try to navigate, get up to your, uh, don't, don't put the, the hoop back on. You have to have the hoop off when you're editing because that's when you're going to get into that endless loop. So go back into your pencil, which is your editing mode, and then go into your, I think it looks like a little filing system. I know it's. I hit the back and then. All right, so just hit the red. The X? Yeah. All right, so hit your pencil. And then go into your filing cabinet. Okay. And then go out to get some new lettering. Oh, I see. And you can change the font. Now, this time I want you to use an uppercase and a lowercase in your font. And we're going to move it just below where we stitched. Just for practicing. Yeah, you have to you have to you X out a couple things, go. and then go up into your filing system, oh, filing, okay. and then, and then outward. You have an outward option. Right. All right. Okay. So pick any horizontal one you want, and then yeah, you got to do something six or less. I have I have. You got to think of a grandchild, a pet, a husband, a car. And if you got that all inputted, go ahead and set it. And we're going to um, then put uh, put it into the uh, needle with the dot, 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 put our hoop on, and then we're going to go and then virtually position it. So we press our green Correct. check mark. Correct. Green check mark's a good thing. And so, put the hoop on? nope, you have to go into your, there first. Now you, Now it tells you to put it on. Yeah, you have to go to the dot, oh, dot, dot. Okay. That's what I mean by the dot, dot, dot. Okay. And then once it's on and it's found, the, it basically is calibrating to where it knows where the hoop's at. That's when you go back up to the editing mode to move things around. Okay, I'm not going to be able to get that on here. I like what you're doing, though. We're going to be fine. Go to the, your uh, okay. pencil. And now okay, if you move it down, it's going to fit in there just fine. <laughs> All right. So if you want to get real fussy about it, yeah. use these dials. Oh, okay. Okay, that's, is that where it will start? Nope. It will start up there. Up there, okay. And see, that's just right. Okay. Okay. You could bring it down a little further if you want, yeah, but, okay. you know, whatever. How's our positioning doing? Let's see where the top of the L is. That's fine. You're going to have a lot of room for below. Okay. The closer you are, the more room you're going to have to sew later. So do it if you're pleased with it. If you're like, if you're liking it, go ahead and sew. Sometimes, just learning the the, the keystrokes to get it to sewing is is a really is a process, isn't it? So how do I get it on the green light? I'm sorry. I know. Okay, where are you at? I'm right here. I just got to get this light green. All right. So. You have to go to the sewing feature, which is that bottom. It's a needle with the dot, dot, dot. Okay. And then if you lower the foot, it's green. There you go. Don't feel bad. Everybody has that same thing. It's like, it's just that extra step. I don't know. The, the manual itself? I think it probably does. Yeah. Yours doesn't look like it's quite doing anything very good. Yeah, just hit the green. I went to the plus and added this one, but now I don't know how to get just stitch this one. It just keeps, um, when I push the needle, it goes back to the first one. I know. We're just, I'll show you how. Okay. See that little down arrow there? Oh. And that way you can skip the first ones. If you'd want to skip any color in a thing, you just hit the down arrow. Perfect. Thank you. Isn't that cool? Yeah, let's see what's going on. Well, this shows us how to back up, so we're not going to worry about that. So first thing we're going to need to do is raise the presser foot. 
No, you want to raise that presser foot oh, there. there. Okay. Okay. Oops. Next, take the hoop off. It's just part of your basic troubleshooting a little bit. Just say the bobbin's empty. Okay. Yeah. So can you find it on that side first? Yeah. All right. I'll show you how to back up a few stitches. So I took the bobbin out and it's just got that little snippet. Yeah. So you just reset the bobbin with extra thread and you'll be fine. So somehow on the line the, the thread catcher didn't pull enough thread to catch it for the next for the next stitch. Alright. So hopefully the audio is good on this so you can uh, you know catch what we're doing here. But uh, you know, it's, it's the basics and you kind of, you're going to have some stumbles before you get it to work all the way through a project. It cut it off. Yeah, it does. It's supposed to cut it off here. Let me show you. You get that one out of the way right. and, and it just trim it right. All right, so your razor blade is, oh. needs to be replaced. Oh, okay. okay. Like anything, it's, it's just, yeah. all right. Now we're yeah. we're threaded. Okay, so go ahead and put your hoop back on. Ink that out of there. Okay. All right. You might have to just trim. I did negative one. Oh, I told you the opposite. You should have done a plus one. Oh, <laughs> great. See, even even Bernina Jeff can mess up. Her tension was off. I told her to go to a minus one. And it made it look worse, so it really she needed to go to a plus one to increase the upper tension. The oh yeah, the front is what you want to see yeah, right yeah, anyway. There you go. So All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to show you how we're going to back up to the first stitches. Okay. So it brings us right to the backup stage. So turn the top dial to the left. Keep going. All the way to where it says zero or one or two keep going 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 it will stop keep going keep going keep going all right so now we're at stitch number three that's where it always stops at for the beginning now you can just go ahead and start sewing and it and i would trim the thread right there And just let it go. It's going to bury the thread and it'll be fine. I'm so used to using my knee anymore. And I like that knee. Yeah. <laughs> I like my All knee right. Stroke. Now hold the green button in for about four seconds. Now I would hit stop for me. Hit the green button again. Hit the button again to stop it. Now <laughs> use your scissors to trim that off. No, I, we turned that feature off. Yeah. And if you like that feature, if you like that feature, we can turn it back on. When we were in the settings, we turned it off. Because nine times out of a ten on the seven series, it buries that thread. Anyway. All right. Uh huh. Okay. So we want to back up our stitches a little bit. It brings us to the backup mode. So top dial to the left. Back it up until you see stitches. You gotta go lots, do lots, do lots. Okay, so see so you're on stitches now. Yeah. Now go to the right until it opens up to the open space. Keep going to the right, little by little. And you're almost there, keep going. See, I'm looking down here. Dial and look down there. Don't look up there. There. All right, so now you can just start sewing. That was easy. We make it more complicated than it is. They've, they've really streamlined the process of backing up stitches. So where the d red dot is is the starting 
Ja. Mhm. Well, you, you could make coors out of that font. Very good. So anytime you embroider, there's going to be a little bit of troubleshooting. So don't feel like you're doing anything wrong. It's just such a complicated process that a thread's going to break or bobbin's going to not act right. So, you know. Right. You can go backwards or forwards with those dials on your... The bottom one is a jackrabbit. It moves two to three hundred stitches at a time. So use the bottom one responsibly. I usually just use the top, top one to do all my uh, stitch correction. Okay, these little clips are working marvelously. Now, Bernina does recommend that if you're having a lot of problem with your thread pooling or to use one of these thread nets around your thread. But how many times have you got a design with 15 colors and you're going to put that thread net every time? So that's where these stand-up stands work really good that you can attach to the back of your machine. No, it, it stands up and comes off the tip of the spool that way. Yeah. So it gives me an opportunity. So I was talking about cross-wound thread. So you see this thread, it looks kind of like an S, X on the spool. That's cross-wound thread. So it is designed to come off the spool off the skinny part of the cone or one of the ends. Now, straight wound is thread that comes on a spool like this. So it's straight wound thread. It's designed to have the spool rotate. So you want to put that on a, a stand-up spool this way so it rotates, so it comes off with the proper twist. If you have to have it come off the end, it seems to work when I'm filling a bobbin. But that's the basics, the technology of the thread. There's straight wound thread and there's cross wound thread. Cross wound, you really need to have it come off the, the skinny side of the spool. You'll get less twists and you'll get a better uh, production. I always go back to the editing mode before I take the hoop off because there's sometimes it, it's asking you for certain things. So are you back to the little pencil editing mode? Yeah, okay. well, I'm I touched that, so I right. don't have that. Yep, you're in the editing mode. Okay. And then you can take your hoop off. Why do I have my on? Probably because of the um, single hole stitch plate we put on. You're supposed to go in there until it's on. So that's just, it's trying to remind you not to try to zigzag with that single hole stitch plate on. Which, by the time I zigzag, I look up, I, the danger zone's too late. I've already broken the needle. I know, it's, there's, there's reasons for everything. All right, so if you're finished sewing, I want you to go into your design um, uh, folders. And I want to f have you find a small design. It's going to take five to 10 minutes of sewing time. And it has more than one thread color in it. So we can go through a thread change. So go into your menu. And this, this takes time. You've got to audition several of your designs before you find one that'll kind of fit the parameters. So here's your menu. And you've got to go out to the blue. And then we're going to go into our butterfly on this one. So find something in the menus that isn't too big. The sun's not too bad. Touch that sun. OK. Now hit the information thing there. And it will tell us in millimeters how big it is. So we want to make that smaller so it'll fit down here into the bottom part of our Thing. So we're going to resize it. Like this, this is one? part of, yeah, and then hit your dial. Bring it down to about 75% to the left. And all the way down. About there is good. All right. Now we need to touch the icon to get out of this mode. Now we can move it down to there. Okay. 
So we have a clear space to do an embroidery okay. project. Okay. okay. Now you have to touch the little eye icon, the, the information icon, and now do you see the little uh, needle with the dot, dot, dot? Go ahead and do that. And it's going to tell you what colors first. So we're all selecting something a little bit different. Oh, that's perfect. That's the same one she selected. But I heard you say that was a good one. All right. So we're going to resize it. So that little box okay. with the. Okay. But you don't have to move it down. Like later, we're going to do that next. Okay. So resize it to seventy-five percent ish. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. All right. Now you have to hit that icon to get out into that mode. Now just take your finger and move it down. Now. It's yeah, I never liked it that. And that's okay. It's okay. virtual positioning. Okay. That's a great position. Cool. All right. So now you can hit your information I and then get to your sewing mode. So what do I do now? Does, okay. Does it give you a bar at the bottom? No. It's. Well, let's do whatever it says. What is that saying? It's you got to do what it says. Exactly. Figure out what it's saying. Figure out what it's saying. It's saying take the hoop off. Take the hoop off? Yeah. Isn't that saying? It says the red arrows are pointing up. Oh, okay. Okay. Now hit the check mark or the check X. You can't get anywhere until you do what it says on the screen. Okay. Well, yeah. I thought it was telling me to put it on. I know. <laughs> That's the endless hoop, endless loop that everybody has trouble with. So it's a good thing that you kind of hit it. Now you know how to experience it. Good. Now, it, that's the first color. So go find a yellow and put it in and start stitching. If you don't have a yellow, there's a whole case of thread colors right down in there. So I don't know where I meant, what menu are you talking about? Okay, so when you get here, you cannot get out of this unless you turn the machine off or hit the flag. That means you're finished. Okay, now what's it tell you to do? Okay. All right, so we're going to go up into our folders. Now we're going to go the out menu, the very top one. Now go into your butterfly. That's where our st okay. designs are. Right. And let's go into number four. I think we have a small one in there. Okay. And keep auditioning, keep going. Uh, what's number 12? Did I? Um, wait a minute. Hit number 12. How many colors is in that one? <laughs> right, it's only one color. No, we, we want to have you change colors. So go, we're going to go to a different one. There you go. So we're going to go to the butterfly. That's just one color. How do I go back out of that? You have to go into that. Into start that. all over. I'll start all over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now go into here. Whoops. Go into here. Okay. All right. So let's do number one. See if there's something in number one that's mm -hmm. small. Mm -hmm. Go to the next page. Oh, this one will be fine. Okay. All right. So there's three colors in there, three and that's colors. fine. Okay. Good. So it says we can use a smaller hoop, but touch this and because we want to make it the size of our oval. So touch the oval. Well, there's three. Well, it's right there. Oh, there. Oh, okay. I was looking. All right. Now, X out of this. So that gives you a perspective of what it looks like. All right. So now we can move it down to there. But you got faith in the way here. Yeah, I do. So we're going to do some editing. So hit the I, circle I. Now we're going to rotate it right there. Okay, we're going to do it a different way. We're going to rotate it just by touching 90. Okay, that's okay. good. Okay. okay. And then we're going to move it over to, over to there. there. Okay. And then we're going to rotate it just a little bit like that. Oh, okay. Okay? okay. So that's going to fit over on that side good enough for what okay. we want. Okay. Now touch the circle eye again. And now we go into our sewing mode and follow your instructions. Okay. This is so complicated. <laughs> That's why we do it. You you need to come more than once then. I know. It's I will. okay. I will. How are you doing over there, Monique? Good. You got something picked and Yep. All right. I so learned on my other one and then I Yep. Every 
Every generation of machines has a different series of keystrokes. So that's what I'm trying to teach. Okay. Are you threaded? I am. Okay. So what would you do? Is this the last one we're going to do? So all you do is touch there. Okay. It's going to ask you for three other color changes. This is, this is going to be the end of the class. We've got 15 minutes to sew this out. Perfect. Now, when it finishes this color, it's going to stop and trim and ask you for a new color. All right. So this is actually an applique, and we're not going to do the applique process. So go ahead and just hit. We're going to do the same color again. So just go ahead and hit start again. This is something I didn't realize was an applique, but it's OK. Yep. But we didn't put the applique fabric in there, and it doesn't matter. Now, if you like this so much, you can actually get rid of this line we put in there. That's a Frixon pen. If you're not familiar with Frixon, if you could take this to the iron and touch it with the iron, that mark we put in there will just disappear. So it's a, it's a heat-activated ink that goes away when it gets hot. It does. I've put... I've tried it. I've put it back in the freezer after I ironed it, and it does come back a little bit ghost-like, a little fainter. But you know, most quilts aren't going to go in freezers. So is that your favorite pen of choice, marker? Oh, it, my marker of choice depends upon a lot of fa factors. You know, I, I still use this chalk marker that has a little wheel on it. Yeah. I love that one because it works on dark fabrics. Light fabrics, I like the blue pen because it it's erases with water. I don't like the purple one because I can't get to my project fast enough and it erases in the air. <laughs> uh, so it's, but I really like the Frixon for embroidery because I know I can just hit it with the iron and it goes away. So, on the next one, we need you to change colors. Oh, okay. I thought we were going to change colors. No, that, this is part of the process. I always like to go through the color change process two or three times with my students because if there's going to be a technical problem, it's going to happen during color change. You can sit there on a machine all day long with one color and it'll never act up on you. When it's going to act up is usually when you're changing a color. Because something you miss, a, you miss a guide somewhere, you misthread it somewhere, or it cut the thread underneath and the bobbin didn't catch the next time. So we need to, we need to go through the process of troubleshooting multiple color changes. Yes? I use my bobbin, my gold bobbin, yep. for regular sewing. It, it could cause, let's say you're doing a wide zigzag, okay. it, it could cause that zigzag to tunnel because it's so tight, instead of laying nice and flat on your fabric, okay. when you got a real tight bobbin, it's going to pinch that fabric and kind of tunnel it. That's the only issue. It's going to be a stitch quality issue. So can you use that bobbin without pigtailing it or no? It's designed, you kind of have okay. to. So that's why there's two of them, one with the gold latch and one with the silver latch. And the silver latch, as a technician, we set it up with different tension weights than the one with the, the pigtail. So if you buy a new silver one, which I planned on today, it's yep. all set up and ready to go. Correct. Okay. We actually open up every bag and tension them here at the store. Bernina's usually pretty good, at coming right out of the bag good, but we just like to make sure you're not driving 300 miles away, <laughs> open up a bag and it doesn't work. Because here in Western Colorado, we have a lot of distances between our customers. And I know from my YouTube followers that they have the same boat. I think in the whole state of Kansas right now, one customer told me there's only two dealers. So Kansas is a big area. So you'd have to, they end up going four hours one way just to have their machine serviced. And, you know, I service all the way up to, like, 
Snowmass Village, that's a ways away. And customers yesterday from Redstone, Colorado. So there's, there's the need for these videos. So did that stop for you? Did you change your setting? I, I stopped and cut the screen. Very good, very good. And we'll change your setting back so it'll do that. What? Let's just change your setting back right now. Go ahead and hit stop sewing. Where we were in earlier today, we're going to hit our okay. gears. Okay. Now hit the uh, middle and brewery feature. And right here on the cut, mm -hmm. oh, okay. turn that one to green. All right, okay. and now X out of this one. Okay. Very good. Now start sewing. And now the next time, it'll, ask, it'll stop and ask you to trim that if you need it. And you can stitch any color you want. It's this bottom bar. That's the color it's yellow? giving you. Yeah. Is that what it's telling me? Yep. I don't and want it yellow. if you don't want it yellow, this is your project. Because it's already measured. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm kind of an artsy guy. I rarely follow the uh, colors they suggest. I kind of work on my own. And I was doing this um, tea towel for my brother for Christmas. And he, he's a hunter, so I was doing this elk, the Colorado elk with the big horns and everything. And there was 27 colors in that elk. It shaded the body. And so there was taupes and grays and browns. So I did one color, and it looked awful. I'm like, I can't. So I backed up, started that color over, and stitched right over the top of that color with a new color and it made it look perfect. So if you do have a color you hate, back up to the beginning of that color and stitch over the top of it. It's not a hundred percent fix, but it fixes about 80 to 90 percent of that color coming through. And when you're looking for shading like hair or texture, sometimes it even looks better than just one color. It does make the design really, really thick. So it turns it into a a merit badge basically if you get too many layers but when everything's working fine and as you do this more and more it becomes more and more fun it's like building a campfire when you start everything you get your designs you get all your threads together that's like your kindling and your starting of a campfire in your wood now you put the match to it is when you hit the green light and you get to watch and enjoy your work. So when these machines are working and doing all the work for you, it's like that campfire. It's warming you up. It's giving you that sense of accomplishment and you've learned something. So it's done when you get to the screen. Yep. And do you see a little uh, flag? It looks like uh, NASCAR. Then you're done. Okay. Now, not all models have the NASCAR flag, but uh, Somewhere along the line, you is it time to change threads again? Yeah, this one changes a lot out. Yep. All right, so you're done. Uh huh. We got a minute. Why don't we try a little bit extra for you? Okay. So, go to the filing system again, and go out to the yeah. Find your butterfly, and go into the soccer ball. And you've got bicycles and tennis. You have sewing notions and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, um, just for grins, let's do that bicycle right up there. Because that's just, it tells us how many colors. That's just two colors. colors. Okay. All right. So we're going to put it into the big hoop again. And we're going to turn it sideways oh. to fit over here. Okay. So hit your hoop icon and select the oval one and X mm -hmm. out after that. All right, so now to get to our tools, we have to hit the circle I, mm -hmm. and then the rotate one is that okay, circle. Right yeah. Hit 90. Okay. That one goes on 90? Yep. Okay. We're going to hit 90 again, and then the wheels will be over oh, here. Hit right. 90 two more times. That's what we want right there. Okay. okay. And, then and then to get out of this tool, you have to hit the circle I. All right. 
Then you can go to go to there. Yep. I know, step by step, but if you miss one step, you have to kind of go figure out what you missed and start over, huh? Jeff, how do you stop it if you want to stop it? Just hit your start stop button. It's not green anymore. You can hit that start stop button at any time. It's all right, it's always hard. All right, so let's go back to our editing so we can move it over here so it doesn't stitch over the top of our, yeah. You want it as close over here as possible. Oh. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. Your hoop is not red. If you were on the hoop, it would be red. Okay. So now you can go right to your sewing mode. The dot, dot, dot. You even have the right color. And then do the wheels in a different color. Super. Just more practice, the better. Yeah. Now let's see if it stops for us. Okay, it stopped and let us trim. And there's nothing to trim, so you're good to go. Now, do you hear your hook working right now? You kind of hear a clatter? That's time for a drip of red oil. Oh, okay. When, you, when we stop. I wouldn't do it in the middle of a project. Okay. And do you hear that little, do you hear the noise the machine's making? when it's going fast, that's telling me it needs a drip of oil from the top down. Okay. But I wouldn't do it now. I would do it at, at before you put it away. I get, I left home. Yep. Seven series is like oil every two hours or every, really? every project. And you know how to oil it from the top down, top right? That little, that little yeah, that, it has a pointy on it. Yeah. yeah. Somebody showed me that, and then I checked with Bernina International, and they said in July of 2019, they put into a technical letter that that was an official way you can oil these machines. Instead of taking everything apart. You can still do that, and I recommend it now and then to clean it out. But on a daily basis, just take that plate off, drip down from below, and you're good to go. So we're all getting close to the end. Are you all finished? Yeah. All right. Did something off center? Uh, well, these go. Well, yeah, just, I that was just go. part of, did we use our finger to move it? That's why. Yeah. Now, here's something that really is a not, is kind of a good way if you want to line things up on your uh, uh, hoop, is instead of using your finger to move your design, use your dials and your, your, your knobs will keep it, if you just use the up and down knob, which is the lower one, it'll keep it on the flagpole. If you use your top knob, left or right, it'll keep it on the horizontal. And there's actually little numbers. Those are actual, the numbers next to that little dial are millimeters from center. So if you're a minus 500, you're 500 millimeters away from the center. So it, it's, there's, there's so much built into the, these machines that even since 2006, I'm learning stuff every time I, I pick one up. So, there's, so don't feel like you need to learn it all in one day. It's a process. And like anything, you learn to drive a car. How many months did you have to practice? How, how long before you could drive alone? So you got to think of it as a process like that. See, you're stayed. You're stayed up. So... I'm going to turn the uh, video off here. Remember, if there are questions, uh, things you want to purchase from me, please call the shop at 970-256-1293. My email is J as in Jeff, P as in Peter, V as in Victor, L-E-F-T-Y like lefty at AOL.com. And I personally answer every single email from YouTubers that have emailed me. So you will get an answer of some sort and please subscribe. This has been a great way to pass on the knowledge. Somebody said years ago, I wish there was a way to stick a USB stick in Jeff's ear and just download everything he knows. So this is the next best way. So it's out there for posterity to use and 
The only answer I got to give you that's sad news is I only ship to the United States. Somebody asked me from Saudi Arabia to ship them stuff today. Somebody a couple days ago asked in uh, Scotland. She said there's a round of golf if I ever get there waiting for me. So anyway, it's been it's been a wonderful trip so far and enjoy these. Goodbye.